All right, excellent. So uh, welcome, everyone. This is a uh, meeting that um, we uh, are kicking off um, the uh, fall webinar series for NIF. Um, Dr. Ra has been very nice to um, present the first, uh, the first webinar in the series, um, which is wonderful. This is also a new format uh, we're trying to use not completely familiar with, but we will see. Hopefully, things will uh, work out well. Um, Satra is a prof uh, professor at both Harvard and MIT. Um, he has been running multiple projects throughout his illustrious career, shall we say. Um, and one of the latest and um, one of the most fun, I believe, is NeuroStars and BioStars. And he will take um, us through some of those. These are question answering type sites. He has done some very interesting things with those question answering sites, including aggregating a lot of data around these questions um, and uh, serving these things centrally uh, back to people. This is based on a, um, the Stack Overflow model, which has been extremely successful. Um, I certainly search that and, and find always very good answers whenever I have code. Um, that I need to look up. So with that, um, and I'm sure that I have not done uh, Satra any justice in terms of, in terms of his, um, all of his career aspirations and goals, but I will pass him the presenter role. And um, okay, so now we should be all seeing um, Satra's computer. I will mute myself if everyone could please also mute themselves really helpful for the recording. Thank you. Satra, please Great. take it away. Wonderful. Uh, can everybody, uh, well, I, I'll ask if, as long as one person tells me that they can sh see the screen, I'll continue. I can see your screen. You can. Great. Uh, so I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce a couple of projects. I, I have to say, I can't take much more than a social role in describing some of these projects. It was started by Istvan Albert, and I'm going to try and put so Isfan Albert is a research associate professor at uh, Penn State College, and he was the one who started BioStars. And I'll talk about some of the inspiration that came from Stack Overflow. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the computer science world, Stack Overflow has been an incredibly active community in helping answer questions, troubleshoot problems that people have had. Unfortunately, for neuroscience, no such thing existed. And we started trying to do something like that through Stack Overflow. Unfortunately, Stack Overflow doesn't just allow you to build a new Stack Overflow site for a given domain. You have to go through a beta period where you have to bring in followers, put in questions, uh, and then if that community grows, they allow you to transition to other things. Now, it turns out that the domain of neuroinformatics, which is the intersection of neuroscience and informatics, is still fairly small, even though many of the neuroscientists use uh, tools every day people who are willing socially to come onto these platforms are still fairly small. So this was the same issue also in the bioinformatics world, and that's where Istvan comes from, and he started BioStars. So much like Stack Overflow, these platforms, as Anita pointed out, are Q&A platforms, so question and answer. You post a question and you get an answer. And I'll start off with BioStars, because that's where we built things up from and go through some of the advantages for a platform like this and how it can increase and help the community at large. And so we think of this as essentially a 21st century platform as opposed to traditional mailing list. And we do think that as a way, in a way it can supplement traditional mailing lists and provide a, a way for people to quickly navigate and browse through information. Now, one of the first things that comes up on a platform like this is login and other things. So we will go through how you might go through the login process, 
start establishing questions, uh, answering questions, and how to browse things over the next 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but perhaps I could go through some of the advantages of some of these platforms a little more. So first of all, I'm on Bob. I can click on any question, and it immediately tells me what the question is. And it's a question asked by somebody, in this case, Y Liu Ego uh, from France. Uh, it automatically gets these tags related to the question, and then we see a bunch of answers. So right off the bat, you can see some differences from traditional mailing lists. There are multiple answers. They're sectioned. Uh, they're sectioned in the way that you can see an answer, and they're ordered in some way as well. And the ordering currently in BioStars is based on the number of votes that an answer has received. So immediately, you can see that two sets of numbers with a question. How popular a question is gets a number, and that's over here. And if people cannot see my mouse move, I'll try to be slow. If, if you lose me, just type something in the chat message so that I know I've lost somebody somewhere and I'll try to come back. Uh, so you get qu questions rated in terms of people liking the question or thinking it's important. You can bookmark a question so that if somebody responds to it, you get an email saying, hey, uh, somebody has put in some response, something has changed about this question. But also for every answer, you get the same kinds of information. So you see which answers are most in terms of the visualization platform, answers that are more popular uh, bubble up to the top, answers that are less popular bubble down. Uh, and you can add comments to the original question. You can add comments to individual answers. And that's how you get a little bit of threading within the context of such a platform. And that makes it much more relevant because you can talk about a specific part of a question as opposed to looking through standard discussion forums where you have to scroll through everything before you get to something that's relevant. Now, some of the standard forums are also changing their interface to accommodate such mechanisms, but many of the traditional ones require you to go through a fair bit of uh, information. So I'm going to log out and I'm going to start off with, I think one of the things that really has helped BioStars and by reference NeuroStars become easy. So if I do user login, I can log in with a bunch of different options. So I can use Persona, Google, GitHub. I can also use email or password. So if I move over to NeuroStars, I'll log out. I'll go login. It adds a few more things. So in addition to personal Google and GitHub, we also have Facebook as well as Orchid. Uh, these allow different ways, and all of these will be synchronized in terms of the underlying representation. So you will be identified independent of which ones you log in through. So I think I have logged in through Google before, and I'm going to ask. Google to log me in, and it logs me in and identifies me. I'm going to log out, and I'm going to go back in. And this time around, I'll go through. Uh, I haven't tried Orchid before. Let's see what happens. I do have my Orchid ID. Okay, so now it tells me if I go through ORCID, I should log in with my standard account and then associate my ORCID ID. So I'll go back to Google. And lo and behold, 
my Google account as well as my Orchid account are now connected to me. So this allows many different ways in which people can connect to this. Now, why did we add Orchid? We added Orchid because it's being used in a lot of publications. So eventually we want to pull in all the publications that you may be part of or related to as part of your profile over here. But going back to Neurostars now, you also start seeing things like this. So in this case, uh, the 6K over here says I have a rating of 6,000. And that's because I may have answered a few questions and a few mailing lists that have been imported over here. So you start getting reputation built up as part of questions that you have answered and other people have upvoted. So this also gives a little bit of a reputation or alt metric on people's role in these forums. So going back to Neurostars, uh, if we click on a message, all messages have tags uh, that are relevant. So if I want to look at all messages that have been tagged with NyBabel, I get a set of things. So it allows easy searching of things. But I might also want to search by typing. So this is a live search. If I want to start typing free surfer, it'll give me a set of posts that are related to it. Now, why is this useful? Because many times you often have a question that has already been answered. You could find this through Google search, or you could come here and type in the live search box. And you can also use classic search if you don't want to use the live searching. Uh, one of the things we've done in this case is pulled in traditional mailing lists. Uh, in this particular case, we pulled in Google Groups, and that comes in through a different font. It tells you which of the messages originated on Neurostars itself versus which we pulled in from a traditional mailing list. Um, you get the same kind of interaction over here. So this was an answer provided by me on a question at some point in time in the past, uh, looks like 3.4 years ago, and trying to aggregate different mailing lists into this platform automatically. Because then it becomes a central resource where people can relate questions across different pro projects and topics. The other things that you get when you have this is you can still use emails to receive uh, posts. So I have a list of tags here, uh, and these are my tag settings that match posts in my user profile. So to change it, I would simply go back to my user profile and say edit my profile. And down here is the list of tags that I consider my tags. And there's some watch tags, which basically tell me that I will receive an email whenever a post matching this tag is posted. So that allows for custom filtering of information to you in terms of your email mechanism. But you could also get posts through an RSS feed for those who still use RSS feeds. And because these posts are visually altered, you can decide how you want to look at things. So I can see how many posts were made today. And probably, oh, there was one post. I can alter it to all time. I can alter it to this week. Um, I can sort the posts by different things. I can ask uh, how many answers. So. So this is now sorted by the number of answers. I can look at the number of votes or creation. So when was a post created? So one of the earliest posts came up here. And typically, posts that are created very recently have fewer answers than longer uh, posts which have been posted for a while. So the other pieces of this forum are the following. So if I go back to the original thing, you'll see a number of tags that come up that are not these box-like tags. They're actually things that are put directly at the level of the message itself. So these job posts 
get the job tag. And in addition to that, it gets this job keyword appended, uh, prepended to the title. So you can quickly go through these things. Uh, the planet, which we haven't set up here, but we can show you what the planet does for Biostars. It aggregates RSS feeds from various blogs around the world that are related to bioinformatics. We'll be setting up a similar kind of thing in Neurostars itself. So now, if you're interested in certain things, you can see the blog posts aggregated just within this planet feed. And so you'll get to look at things relevant to your domains of interest through the planet feed at a central location. Going back to. So it also tells you. Uh, let me take a quick break here. I think I need to let somebody else join. So you get the list of all current tags on the system. Obviously, that's much smaller than if I now look at all the tags on Biostars, which has about 28 pages of uh, tags. And then we can talk about a couple of things that we can do just in terms of walking through this platform in terms of creating a post. So A, a new post. And it asks you what type, in addition to the title, what type of post it is. And there are several categories for this. So you have a question, a job ad, a tutorial, a tool, a forum, a news, a blog, or a page. And this is structured around some of the common things that people do all within this Q&A-like platform. So if I wanted to discuss something, I might want to put it into the forum post. If I wanted to ask a specific question or I had a tutorial for, let's say, a, a software, I would put it into the tutorial. So let's ask a question. I'm going to take suggestions for question on the chat window for all of the people who are listening. I want to see the tutorial. Sorry. <laughs> so this, I don't have any material for a tutorial right now, but we could. But you're example, making it. Do how to use Neurostars. And I can put a post over here uh, to create a tag, let's say. And this is great. We'll put a um, we'll put a link to this um, onto this uh, new new post that you've made. A link to the recording. And and we can edit it as or people can add things to it. Step two. That's lovely. Post. And I can say submit. Yeah, if these things come back out in an RSS feed uh, like fashion, maybe we can actually pull uh, these in to aggregate to the tools um, yes. that we have in the tool catalog. That would be fantastic. Uh, but I, I will hold the rest of my questions for later. Okay. Uh, and because I know we were talking about a tutorial, it would be really nice to have a Stack Overflow-like tutorial. So if I look at Stack Overflow, it says take the two-minute tour. Anybody can ask a question, anybody can answer, best answers are voted. And this is really nice. So what we are trying to do, because we have an open source project, is exactly that. So there is on Biostar Central an issue that was posted just today to say, create a stack overflow like thing. So I can go back now to my post, either edit it or add a comment and say, discussion, on a tutorial page happening on 
GitHub. Put that there and I'll add a comment. So that way, if anybody comes to this looking for a Neurostars tutorial and has suggestions, they can go over to GitHub and post and follow that issue or add comments to that issue. Okay, among other things that we envision for this site are the following. I mean, you, I've already shown you that there's a site called Biostars and there's a site called Neurostars. And these are distinct entities separate from each other. Uh, along the development pipeline will, is the potential for us to either search for posts across related sites. So anybody should be able to deploy this fairly easily. Uh, and I'll go into that in a second. And if you're using it as a user, especially as these, as research disciplinary you don't want to be moving back and forth. And in that sense, all we have offered so far is a nicer visualization and interface and a discussion interface. What we also want to offer is a nice aggregation interface. So people could create their own forum. It could be a high performance computing for neuroscience forum, for example, or it could be some other thing. And you'd be able to post directly to that through your own interface. And we'd be able to share users across these platforms. So that's plan its work in progress. We don't have that interface yet, but that's where we intend for these things to go. So a couple of other things that uh, this allows in addition to the features I talked about, uh, standard question and answer, post questions, answers, comments, user moderation, voting, badges, threaded discussions. You have email integration, you have the RSS feed, you have external authentication, but you can also in a version coming up fairly soon, distribute data torrents through this platform and discuss data using the same QNA mechanism. You'd be able to write plugins because it's an open source project you, and it's based on the Django framework. For those interested, you can go in and add features to Biostar Central. We have tried to ensure that everything gets uh, pushed back to a master repo where things are maintained across these different communities. And uh, I think with that, I'm happy to take various questions because I think some of these things, I think that's the basic layout lay of the land in terms of how things are going. Uh, I'd be happy to take additional questions and go into other things. For example, how do you install, manage, deploy these things? There's extensive documentation. Uh, we had a Google Summer of Code student working on Neurostars through this summer. And that has resulted in uh, the ability to install and run your version of such a platform anywhere and customize it for your own needs. Uh, we are hoping, again, that we will have these decentralized platforms, but be able to query and relate across each other uh, within the next year or so. But it will require a little more re-architecting of the underlying platform. Uh, but there is quite a bit of extensive documentation on the Biostar site. And again, this is a community project. It's being maintained and driven by Istvan, and we are all helping contribute and customize and add features as we see fit, depending on the different use cases. So with that, I'll take any questions. Um, so this is Anita, I'm the moderator, um, and I would love to maybe get us started on a question while people are kind of um, gearing up to ask their own. Um, now, I, I love this. I think you've uh, you know, addressed a lot of them. Mine um, have quite a bit to do um, with, you know, initially I wanted to see what the RSS feeds look like and how easy those were, what the, the schedules were. But I think that this is a really great site. I mean, we have on this, we have a question answering forum, which is kind of difficult to maintain. We kind of need um, somebody to actually log into the website um, on a, on a pretty regular basis in order to alert the rest of us that, you know, a post has come in. And there's a lot of spam that ends up um, on that site. Um, so I think my first question is, um, if I basically take out everything from the, um, from the current NIF framework and put it into Biostars, or Neurostars, I'm sorry, and um, we can maintain it there, what is uh, the process for 
sort of maintaining a spamless list because that always <laughs> seems to be kind of one of the banes of my existence. Um, people trying to sell Viagra and things. <laughs> Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of spam that has come through, at least at the posted level. Uh, I think part of it has to do with how these various logins work and just the authentication platform of going through Google or Facebook. Uh, let me click on user login again. These itself uh, clean up a lot of the, most spammers will try to sign up not through one of these, but uh, register an unknown email address and mm -hmm. so I think this itself has left it. Also, we are not as popular as any of the traditional sites. So that, I think, also helps with not receiving a lot of spam. But there's spam filtering in the back end of this. And so it, so far, we've been pretty happy with standard spam filtering that takes care of things. Um, so I'm not sure if Arno can, um, can be uh, heard, but he is definitely asking. Um, if uh, how do I add a new tag to track questions on a given topic, I would like to create a new mailing list, as I would like to create a new mailing list. Sure. So, uh, Arno, if you want to create a mailing list for Mindboggle, one way to add a ta tag would be just exactly how uh, we created this new post. So if I go back to Neurostars and look at this tutorial, the tag software didn't exist prior to me creating this. So when you hit post, and you get to the point in the post where it says post tags. It says uh, choose one or more tags to match the topic. To create a new tag, just type it in and press enter. So if you were creating a mind boggle tag, you would just do that. And then from there on out, anybody who uses mind boggle or tries to post something about it could reuse that tag. And that's as simple as starting a new mailing list effectively. Now, to get notification of this, you go to your profile account, which is up here next to the Neurostars logo, and say edit your profile, which is under profile settings. Scroll down, and you say watched tags. So this new tag that I created, if I wanted to get notification of it, I would just add comma software. And since I know you'll be creating a mind boggle thing, I'll probably put mind boggle right there. And when it's created, I'll also get some notifications. I hope that answers your question. Yes, uh, Satra, actually, if I were to do so prospectively, as opposed to based on a post, if I wanted to create a whole new um, uh, a tag for something that is not attributed to a given post, can I do so as well? Uh, I don't think that currently exists. Uh, so I can create tags within my profile, but I don't believe that translates to a tag on the system. So for example, if I go back to my profile and I, I just created the mind boggle tag, right? Which you haven't created yet. Correct, Arno? Uh, That's right, I haven't created one yet. Okay, so here I've put it into my tags. So mind boggle is now part of my tags. But if I go to all tags, mind boggle is not listed over here. So the idea behind tags is that they have to be relevant to a post at hand. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, question. Do the tags come out of the RSS feed? Can you show us the, the RSS feed, actually? Yes. Uh, so here's, uh, I don't think I have a good XML reader on it, but uh, So if I click on the link uh, for the RSS feed, it links, lists what are the standard feeds, which include the latest posts, new questions, uh, 
advanced usage, which allows various different ways of getting at these feeds. So for, you can have multiple tags. So that feed will give you specific tags that you're interested in. You could have multiple users. You could, you would use the user ID or UID of the users to get uh, feeds to post by those users. Hopefully at some point in time, we might get better ways of at least crafting this feed. Uh, and if I list new questions, this shows me the RSS feed. I don't think tags are included. Let me take a quick look. Because I mean, you you have a specific jobs feed, but then there are other um, categories. Like the tutorial is one of the categories. Is does that at least come out as a tag in the RSS feed? So, if not, where can I submit a user request? Ah, uh, so <laughs> to submit a user request, I would say uh, you should post a new issue on Biostar Central. Mm -hmm. That's the place where we are putting in feature requests and various user requests. Uh, in terms of RSS feeds, the way we have it right now is um, so there's the job feed, uh, and so the feed itself has semantics of what it's feeding, right? So if we look at the URL of this thing, I'm going to just copy uh, link address and I'll paste it here. That says it's the latest feed. Mm -hmm. uh, so the URL itself reflects what you're getting out of it. So it doesn't have any tags directly, but it gives you at least the notion of what is being sent through your RSS feed. Now, the RSS feed, because it's highly customizable, if you would like additional things to it, we can easily add them to the feed that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So it would be an easy fix potentially? Yes. Or an easy, easy add rather? Easy add. Excellent. And, and um, one of our goals with the Google Summer of Code student was to create a platform where we could approach the, this very much does. So we can update the user interface fairly easily and redeploy it under the hood quite easily. So things like that become very easy to redeploy. Okay, very nice. Um, very, very nice. Okay, does, um, does anyone else on the call have um, other questions? Because I can ask a couple of very specific, you know, NIF questions. Um, and I certainly know how um, a couple of other public uh, feeds, uh, public mailing lists that um, um, I could certainly point you to, and I, I wonder if you could tell me like how easy it would be to to put one of those things in um, to Neurostars. So, right. for example, there's a nice mailing list. I'm not sure what the platform that they're using is, but um, at the Human Connectome Project, seems to be quite active, and they do a lot of question answers, you know, on on the mailing list, so that. Um, so with a lot of the, the different file formats and things that they're dealing with, Nifty versus, um, you know, other MRI, MRI formats, sorry. Right. So, so this is the Human Connectome Project mailing list. Yes. Uh, and the user archives, luckily this is based on Mailman, uh, mm -hmm. which makes it very easy for us to slurp up this information into Neurostars. Now, one of the things we are doing is we are going mailing list by mailing list and getting permission to do so instead of uh, because many of these mailing lists don't directly tell you what their law, copyright laws are. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and so we are approaching each individual. Uh, so very soon we should have, at least in the brain imaging world, uh, the free surfer mailing list as well as the FSL mailing list into this. We're still waiting to hear back from the SPM mailing list. So that way we aggregate all of those information into it. The mailman formats are the easiest to do. Google Groups is harder, uh, but that's how we got NiFi, the NiFi users mailing list into Neurostars. What often needs to be done for some of these uh, mailing list formats which don't directly expose an MBOX format uh, is one of two things. One is, you give us an MBOX download from within the mailing list, and mm -hmm. we include that in. Or two, we set up a user, a Neurostar user on the, 
on your mailing list. Mm -hmm. And we sync things through that person's authentication to that platform. Ah, oh, okay. So those are the two approaches through which we are getting it. Because the other thing that we would like to do, at least while people are still transitioning this platform and other traditional mailing lists, if somebody comes here and answers a question that is on a traditional mailing list, we want to be able to post back to the traditional mailing list, look, this question has been answered, uh, and this is the answer there. And so we are looking at that aspect through a user that sits on both platforms. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. No, that, that's beautiful. Um, so this is something that, I mean, you know, obviously NIF aggregates lots and lots of data. Um, we do have blogs, we do have jobs, we have some other things, but we have never even, you know, attempted to touch the um, this mailing list slash uh, uh, stack overflow like community. And there's a lot of questions there, there's a lot of answers there, there's a lot of things that um, people I think will get get answers to their uh, their questions if their questions are somewhat like any of these. So I, I think this is a great service that you're doing. Um, and I would like to, you know, work with you to, in, in the ways that, that I can from this to kind of help develop this um, further if uh, if we can, because I, I think it's a, it's a really valuable service. I think so. That was one of our key things is that we are, I mean, many of us are on multiple mailing lists and we have to jump between each other. And when I monitor some of these mailing lists, I see the same question on mailing lists. Or exactly. There is no cross posting, there is no cross listing directly. And so we wanted to provide a platform where people could do it through a centralized thing, at least to start with. But really, our vision is to make this decentralized so that. Uh, people can decorate it at least, and whereas the underlying data aggregation, much like NIF does for various things, can then mm -hmm. be centralized and talk to each other. That's a perfect vision, and I um, I love it. This is wonderful. Um, okay, are there other questions from the community at large? If you can demute yourself and or type it in, that would be great. Yeah, I have a question. Um, on the categories for Posts. I don't see how one would advertise a given uh, data repository or other kinds of resources other than this generic tools. Right. So one of the things, let me see if I can quickly go back here and search. That quickly chose. So this is very specific to Bit rather than anything else. And this was a forum, and this is still in the works. It hasn't been merged with the master thing yet. But the idea was, and unfortunately, these links have expired because test.biostars.org is uh, a site that goes up and down for various testing purposes. And one of the things in terms of features that we want to have on this site is uh, have a running update of which links whenever the page gets loaded to let you know visually that the link is broken or available. Uh, we can't, and potentially if you are the author, will notify you that you have a post where your link no longer points to an available thing. Uh, so the idea behind data sharing was that you would make a post and put a link to your data source. If it was a BitTorrent thing, it would also seed a BitTorrent uh, location through this platform and then you can discuss details of that uh, obviously there are many other ways in which we could improve the interface but we wanted to see where things go this is fairly new no other site currently has it uh, but we wanted to kind of test where things are and already just in terms of the discussion we found that there were certain places which simply blocked BitTorrent protocol so not everybody will be able to access it. I heard yesterday that at UPenn, Neurostars was blocked some web configuration. Uh, so these are things that we want to work with various folks and try and figure out what's most appropriate. Does it answer your question, Arna? Yes, thanks. Um, uh, is anyone else? Or can I ask my next question? 
Okay, so my next question is, if somebody does, like Arno, want to post about a new tool, and um, one, I would like to know about that tool, potentially, because it is getting some um, kind of questions for the community, but we have um, at NIF kind of a centralized location for a lot of these uh, these tools. They all have identifiers. They have, um, you know, not all, but some have authors. Um, some have wherever the code lives, say if it lives at Nitric, then there's a lot more information there in terms of who created that code, you know, how it runs and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, but I, I feel that the central role that um, really NIF plays is to really provide a complete listing of some of these things. And we're starting to get uh, somewhere in terms of actually putting these identifiers out into the community. So I wonder if uh, this is something that you guys could kind of consider putting the identifiers of some of these tools or at least autocomplete on the names or, you know, something so that when these things get a tag um, of, you know, a software tool or something, and again, this might be a feature request <laughs> that I send to, uh, to Biostars, but um, it would be then very, very easy to aggregate that discussion to a particular tool page, which, um, you know, if we, if we have the identifiers as the kind of go-between between the tool page and the, the discussion, it might be a really easy thing to then implement on the, uh, you know, inside of the, the registry where the rest of the data lives, right? And right. then we can push that out to others. Because, I mean, the, the idea is to have data, to aggregate data, and to push it out to all the places where people might be. Yeah. And if we can, if we can kind of work together to, to solve some of that, um, I think it would be a really powerful way to, one, have some tutorials that would be very nice and put pushed into various places in the community where that those descriptions of those tools are. Um, and also, if there are questions about a particular tool, those should show up everywhere that the, you know, that tool is, is listed and mentioned. So this would just be a really nice way for us to be able to kind of integrate some of the efforts uh, here. So and I, think I will refer to something, right? This came <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just yesterday, um, so Brian Avans wanted to know how to attach citations to his software, and that's a question on Biostars, and he had to post it on Biostars partly because you can block Neurostars. Um, <laughs> and the general idea is the following, which is I have a software, perhaps a specific version that I've used in, in a paper, how do I cite it? And there's an effort that Anita is part of called the Resource Identification Initiative. Uh, which is trying to get these things called RRIDs or resource identifiers attached to papers. Uh, and uh, as part of the initiative, if you attach the tool level thing, you immediately get uh, identification of the software to <laughs> the, the paper. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading Melissa's. I hadn't, no, actually, I was reading Anita's response here. I, that's what made me laugh. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. AS is a really not not a great name for a software tool. Um, but so, but I mean, yeah, it's so there's the ID for AMPs, right? And right. Um, it's a simple little string. And then if you click on, um, I can't remember which of the Google Scholar links that, um, yeah, I think the first one, which lists now two papers that are referencing that particular tool via ID. So in those two papers, you know that those two papers actually use that tool because they're being asked to do this in the methods section. Correct. So these are substantive uses of that particular tool. And, um, you know, that comes up in Google Scholar. You don't need a whole lot of fancy machinery to get this done. You just need that little string, the ID, which is right. nice. It's, it's not maybe the perfect thing in the world, but it is a nice way to aggregate a lot of these um, this information. And, and I believe so. I wrote this separately. Uh, separately, to Brian, I was. I should add a comment over here. Uh, one of the things I think it depends on what is the intended purpose of the citation. So, if Brian is thinking primarily of who's using mm -hmm. and, then adding something like the RRID makes complete sense. But I also know that Brian does a lot of work on reproducible research. So. From Brian's perspective, one of the things that would be really useful is not only to know that this 
is the tool that's used, but also which version of the tool is used so that he can reproduce that paper using that specific version of AMPS. And that becomes a little more complicated. But absolutely. within the framework of something like Neurostars, absolutely, I mean, that's part of the idea here. It is a web-based platform. So we can utilize many of the standard things on the web to link out to things. So we can put in automated annotations. So for example, we can put an annotator service on every post. So in addition to not just tools, uh, perhaps keywords or phrases that link out to Neuralex lexicon, right? And that that's, was on our wish list. Our Google Summer of Code student didn't make it that far. Uh, but those are the kinds of things. And we think of all of this as being as creating a rich and complex network of information that then people can abstract out or view or repurpose in various ways. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have one more question. What went wrong? Why RRID colon NLX was not picked up by live search? Does that mean search is not deep enough? Uh, no, that's because no post on Neurostars currently has an RRID. Oh, because it was on Biostars. Yes. So if okay. I go to Biostars instead and start typing RRID, then all the it, things come up. Great. Then all the things come up. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it looks like uh, Arno. Uh, actually posted on the Omics tools. Yeah, he got a bunch of our IDs on his too, so. Fantastic. I should really answer that one because that's, uh, <laughs> that's highly and, topical as well. So right. you're looking at, uh, no, this is, this is great. This is and really I think great. This, is, this great literally idea. illustrates why these platforms need to coordinate and talk to each other. Uh, mm -hmm there's really a lot of overlap in terms of both the development of these platforms and information content that goes back and forth. Yep. I mean, it's, it's really great that you've integrated the ORCID um, IDs as well, because that's, right. um, I'll have to go back and do that on mine. Um, but okay, well, this is great. I mean, unless, um, are there other uh, questions and thoughts? Well, um, I think we're, uh, oh, wait. Okay, wonderful, thanks for everything is the, um, the answer from the, uh, from the group. No, I think this is great. Um, I'm going to uh, pause the recording. And- you pause um, to bag the presenter role? Yes, absolutely. And uh, let me now pause the recording. And um, again,